Lord. The one I'm here to welcome is the children's pastor in church. Many children know the pastor and they didn't come for the conference. At least we have a team. But at least the teenagers around. It's for good that our children didn't come, but we love our children. I believe God is taking us from glory to glory. For the past conferences were virtual, but this one is sitting. The Lord deserves the glory. Means in the next year. As the Lord lives, we shall have our children with us. Uh, Dennis Musoke, businessman. Pastor Dennis Musoke is a businessman. I don't see what I And not in words. Dara Dara business. He's a real businessman. He's educated. Tata. He's a father. And a good husband. Yet he is a pastor. He has more, he surely has more than one talent. I pray for the grace of God that he can use all, he can trade with all. He has done us well. I'm really joyful about the entire team of pastors that we have. For the Lord has given everyone something that helps us to grow. That which he establishes us. And that was the pastor's vision, the bishop's vision. To work in teams. People have different abilities. But each one brings their ability and we serve the Lord. Pastor Dennis Musoke is the chairperson of the pastoral council. He will tell us more when he comes here. Join me in joy and we welcome Pastor Dennis Musoke to share with us the word of God. Praise the Lord. A better hand clap for the Lord. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for this day today. Speak to our hearts in a way we understand. Let your grace be present today. And throughout the whole week. That whoever stands here speaks to our hearts. And challenge our minds. And stretch us to understand you. We pray our God that you send your spirit to give us grace to teach and also the grace to learn and do in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I request you to sit down. I want to thank God for our pastor. He has done us well. That word has a lot in it. He has done us well. I honor the presence of all pastors, the ministers of God, and all our visitors, church members, all you who announce the conference, online. People over online, radio, those on the radio, I honor, I honor you all in your capacities. Please clap for yourselves. Uh, it is the Inner Man Conference. 
era omutwe gwa fe guvudembe fe sesula ya kusatu nyura 10 mukaga and our theme is from the book of ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16 mutume paul atuandikira nga alaba yali mukomera nga alaba abakristayo ate bazze lyo omuntu ali mukomera abatase the apostle paul writes to the church he was in prison and believers had come to him for help you wonder someone who is in prison, but those who are free are the ones coming asking for help from him. It shows that there were many parts that were not right in these people. And in his writing, he writes many words, and in the first chapter, he shows them the importance as they have that in our Lord. And he shows them what they benefit in the Son. And also the profit they have in the Holy Spirit. In chapter 2, he reminds them where they are from. And he also prayed a prayer for them in chapter 3. This chapter has two prayers. The this, first this, prayer is, is in chapter book. one. This book mm. has two prayers. The first one is in chapter one and verse 15. And the second one is in chapter three where we are going to read. And, and, he, and he says these words. Chapter 3 and verse 16. He says, I'll start from 14 until the whole chapter ends. From verse 14, he begins the prayer. Nagamba, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in the heaven and on the earth is named, that he would grant you according to his riches, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So kosomezo bidi. Chemva mfuka amirira chitafe, bulichika echo mogulu necho kunsi kwe chijeri nya. Aba wemwe, ngobu gagabwe chitiwa chewe buli, okunyeze wanamanyi mumu oyogwe, mumu ntuo omunda. The first prayer that we have in chapter 1 verse 15 is a prayer about uh, knowing who the Lord is. Esara jetuine soka musule, soka nolinyewe kumineta ano, ekwata gana kukumanyamu kama wafe yaani. Then uh, the second prayer is a prayer of enablement. So he's praying for these brethren that they may, they, may, they may comprehend and have strength to do what they are supposed to do. They are crying and whining and weeping about small issues that we are attacking them. And they came to the man who was in prison who would have gone to them for help. So he knew that there was some uh, leaking in their lives, so he had to pray for them. And this is the prayer he prays for them. He says in verse 14, for this reason I bow down, to, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in you, that Christ may dwell in, that Christ may dwell uh, in your heart through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Christo atulenga mumitima jamoro kukiriza. Muberenga ne mizi, munyweze buenga mkwagala. Muliokemu wewa amanyi, okukua tanga na magezi, 
Awamu na watu kufubo na obugazi, nobu wanvu, nobu gulumivu, no kugenda wansi webidi, no kutegera okuagala kwa kristo, okusinga okutegerwa, mulioke mtu ukirile okutusa, okutukirila kona okwa katonda. He's praying for these Christians who don't know who they are. And he knew that the deficiency or the problem is with their hearts. And there is lacking something. And he prayed that they may be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. He winds up this prayer in verse 20 and 21. And he says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or pray, I think, according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church by Christ. Jesus, to hold generations forever and ever. Amen. Paul introduces the word in a man unto us here. He understood that the power that makes man walk is dependent on the engine called the inner man. What is seated in you is what determines the way you perceive things. He understood that the fears that were around them and whatever they were scared of, there was something lacking in them. We know that man is a spirit putting on a body and he has a soul. And this man who is a spirit, whatever he is, depends on what is seated inside of him. I'll give you about three things that the Holy Spirit considers to see that he builds strength in us. You can call them tools that he uses to build strength within us. The first thing is called prayer. Write, Write them down. The second thing is the word. The third thing is circumstances or situations or persecution. These three things help a Christian to be strong. They work together. Prayer, the word, the circumstances we go through, they help us either to be strong or weak in God. When you find someone going through a hard situation, if they handle it well, you will find them in a good stand with the Lord. The seven churches that our Lord writes letters unto in chapter 2 and 3 of Revelation. You will find two churches that were found strong. And the reason why they were strong is because they were being persecuted. And the church of Simna and the church of Philadelphia, he had no issue against them because they were going through persecution. The writer in Psalm 119 and verse 67 says that before I was afflicted, I went astray. And he says, but now I keep your word. When does he keep the word? After going through a situation that made him close unto God. 
In verse 71 of the same chapter, he says that it is good for me that I have been afflicted. For it made me learn the statutes of God. The situations we go through, God uses them to see that he builds our inner man to be strong. As we pray to be strengthened in this season, know that even though God is not the one who brings the hard situation, He permits them to come that He may build you and you be strong in your inner man. We have boldness as it is written in Psalms 34, 19 that many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Afflictions, bad situations that come unto us, they come to prepare us and make us strong unto the Lord. He says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Si they are not few, but they are many. But the greatest thing is that the Lord delivers him Njala out of them all. I want to tell you that as we are in a season of praying for the Lord to elevate or glorify us, there is also a door of affliction that is going to open, but the sure thing is that the Lord will deliver you out of it all. Job went through every situation. And he said Job writes in chapter 42 and verse 5 after going through all the things that before I heard of the Lord, but through the things I've gone through, I've been able to see him. And I want to tell you that every situation that comes unto you, the Lord permits it that you may become strong and you get close to him and you get to know him. Prayer. Is a second tool that the Lord uses to build our inner man, to strengthen our inner man. In Song of the Bible, it says in Solomon chapter five, verse seventeen. The reason why uh, the Bible tells us in Basesaronike so katano kuminamsam. Atu gama musabe pray without ceasing. Nti musabe ngo butakoa. Kubange embela bezi jaje tuli. Because when situations come unto us. Newe kaza we kaza no gama ze kufabuto ndi mugumu. And you just pretend that me I'm strong since childhood. Wali embele jange suko kutegera ako. There is a situation that is beyond your understanding. Wali embele janga tojiro oza ngana kunga te ingira ngana mbiro ozo vyo. There is a situation that you can, you can never imagine of that it can come and Mutume you. Paul Chavagamba ba sesolani kanafenga to gamba pray without ceasing. That is why the apostle Paul writes unto the Thessalonians even unto us nti musavenga obutayosa. Ya gamba ba kolosai umusule yukuno nyuruakubi na ba gamba continually honestly pray. He told the Colossians in chapter 4 and verse 2, Nti munyi kirirenga moko sabanga moto nulanga. Njaga la NKJ visaga NLT. Abagamba, nti, moreover it's required in chapter chapter 4, ngambi called Colossians. Kali gamba, continually and earnestly pray. Continue honestly in prayer. Why? There are things that come unto us that in our own strength we are unable. Prayer does not change God. Prayer aligns us in God's will. Prayer positions us. 
Okusaba kututeka mu chifechi tu. Kututeka mu chifo mukono gwa katonda we gututukira ko bulunji. It positions us where the arm of God can come and touch. Buli rensa bamba neto waziza maso ga katonda nga mugamba chino sichi sobola neta gobuyambi obuva joli. Whenever I pray I am humbling before the Lord telling him I cannot but I need help from you. Yes cha vatu gama mu Luke sule 19 lunyo lusoka. That is why Jesus tells us in Luke 18:1. Naba wo lugero rachi bayino kusaba. And he spoke a parable unto them why man ought to pray always and not to faint. This is the only parable which Jesus narrates and even gives a reason why he narrates it. Why he gives the parable, he says men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. Why not losing heart? Because you, sometimes you pray for something and it is like it's not going to be answered. At times you pray but you don't feel like praying. You have prayer items. But no strength to pray. We thank God that he gives us the grace to pray. And I pray that you leave this conference the grace to tarry in prayer. Bible yoke da muzakaria agamanti ngenda na kuzolu vanyuma agenda kuti wako moyo wechisa no moyo kuta kabana. The Bible says in Zakaria that he is going to pour in the latter days the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication. O moyo wechisa no moyo kusaba. That spirit of grace and supplication. Gwe kusabira na gwe ne sabiro luna kurua lero. Is what I pray for you and myself today. O somolo kuanjule nsonga zoma soga mokama. That you present. Present your cases before the Lord. The Bible says in Romans 8:26. That we do not pray according to the flesh. But we pray according to the Spirit. That we don't know how to pray as we ought. Na yomo yomo tu kuvu. But the Holy Spirit. Ya tu yamba mona fubwa fe. Helps our weakness. Nebi gamu bieta sobola kunyonyola. With groanings that cannot be uttered. Waliye mbera joi tamu. There is a situation you go through. That toina na bigamu bi sobola kujinyonyola. And you don't have words to explain it. But the Spirit of God He gives us grace for He knows the mind of God He comes and speaks inside of us and groans within us words which we cannot discern which they call a prayer of heart to heart God give us strength through his spirit in our inner man. Stand that ya kanyama. The devil is not afraid of a strong man. That muscles. The devil that is not afraid of muscles. The devil is not afraid of our muscles. Uh -uh. No. Man is a spirit. Stand moyo. The devil is a spirit. Katonda moyo. God is also a spirit. Shirunji ngo imba nti osamba stand yero muli nyirira. It is good as you Seeing that I'm kicking the devil and stamping Na on him. That even in the spirit you see yourself stamping on him. The strength needs to be with him. He is afraid of the muscles of the spirit. Not the muscles of the body. Bible the Bible gives us the story of David and Goliath. Goliath had history of fighting well in the flesh. Bible the Bible, the Bible explains how gigantic he was. And then they bring a second man on the outside God, but inside he had inner strength. That time when David was forsaken, when he was forsaken, when he was left alone, he had got time to stay with the Lord. He had got time to build in the Spirit. I want to tell you you the time of rejection Baba and you've, be, you've been given a, you've been granted a chance to stay with the Lord so a time is coming of testing Goliath was gigantic outside he was tall but inside he was very small 
David on the outside was small. Nyo. Very small. Despite. But within he was so big. Goliath on the outside represented how David looked like inside. And David on the outside represented what Goliath was inside. The time of affliction and rejection is a chance to tarry at the feet of our Lord. Is a chance for you to take your spirit to the spirit It is your time and your God that you prepare for the day of sorrow. The Bible says if you faint on a bad day, if you faint on a bad day, if you faint on a bad day, and you faint on it, your strength is small. When do you measure your strength? When the day of sorrow has come. Gamba ay Yesu. Say Lord Jesus. Yogera nyomo gamba ay Yesu. Say Lord Jesus. Yambo kose sobulunji ebi serabi ange. Help me use right my time. Mogamba nyambe kose sobulunji ebi serabi ange. Help me use right my time. Ebi serabi yogeze sebwa. Times of trial. Ntule kubigere ebiyo. That I sit at your feet. Amen. Amen. Okusaba. Prayer. Yakoba tu gamba. James says in chapter 5 and verse 16 the prayer of the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That the prayer of a righteous man works much. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Sorry. You can interpret that directly. The effective fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. That it picks on a lot. Okusaba. Prayer is a great tool where God stands to build our spiritual muscles. The warfare of the spirit is a spiritual warfare. Our physical world, whatever challenges us, and those that marry us, they spring from the spirit world. Your spirit is a citizen in the spiritual realm. Meaning, whatever makes you cry or laugh, is from the spirit realm. And you're better awakened quickly and you take your position in the spiritual realm. And I said I'm going to speak about three tools or three things that the Holy Spirit uses to build strength in our inner man. First of all, Yembera. is the circumstances. Yembera. As you're going through circumstances, they are not fun. Someone can give a testimony of what they no, want you know, And you enjoy the testimony. And they show you how God spoke no, to to them. How, how God held his own hand. And they show you how God held his own How the person cried and, met, and God made him to cry. Amina, and then you say, Amen. And you ye shout. But the person who went through the situation, he was going through fire. Praise the Lord. Praise our Lord. Prayer. Situations teach us to pray. And if there is any situation you're going through and you fail to pray, I don't know what will ever teach you to pray. Thirdly, which I want to conclude with is the word. 
Bible tugama Matthew sura ya 10 nyiru akuna. The Bible says in Matthew 4:4. Yesu yali ali kasera ko kugezesebwa. Jesus was in a time of testing. Omoyo mutukuvunga amwaudeko. When the Holy Spirit had set him apart. Stani na jajali. And the devil came to him. Na mugamba bwati. And told him. Fula mayinja emere. Turn the bread into turn the stones into bread. Yesu na yogere bigambo bino. And Jesus spoke these words. Matayo nyanya. Matthew 4:4. 4. Na gamba omuntu. And he said man. Tabera mulamu. Ramere yoka. Shall not live by bread alone. Nena buli chigambe chiva mukamwa kakatonda. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Chigambe chiva mukamwa kakatonda. The word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Tuine chigambo katonda chia yogera. We have the word God spoke. Ne chigambo katonda chia yogera. And the word that God speaks. Ngambe chigambo katonda chia yogera. I've said the word God spoke. Ne chigambo chia yogera. And the word which God Katonda speaks. Katonda Ibrahim. There is the word God spoke unto Na Abraham. Genda ku mountain Moriah. And told him go to mountain Moriah. And sacrifice your son. Wombu ye the only child you have. Na mutuala, and he took him. Na muteka kuchoto, put him at the altar. Na kula buli mukolo go, na guaino kola, and did every ceremony. Na jaya kasafu mito muana. And got out the knife to cut Ngaya the son. Ngaya gala kutu Wanting to fulfill what? E chigambo katonda chia yogera. The word God has spoken. Chukira kulea nyomogambe chigambo katonda chia yogera. Tell your neighbor the word which yogera God spoke. Yogera nye chigambo katonda chia yogera. The word which God spoke. Nga chia yagalo tu kiliza. And he wanted to fulfill it. Na ye wakati mumbele yo. But amid is that circumstance. Katonda na yogere chigambo. God spoke a word at the moment. Aba kuteka mungkola chili katonda chia yogera. If he fulfilled what God spoke. Ya andi bada jemi. He would have disobeyed. Yes, that is why Jesus says that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word. The word of God is for now. Hebrews 4.12 He says the word of God is living, active, sharper. Aha, agambe wati. For the word of God is living, powerful. Those words are important. The word of God is alive. Is alive. Is for now. Is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. By the time he says these words, that two-edged sword was the greatest weapon at the moment. And whoever would possess this sword would be so skilled. The right of Hebrews does not say that the word of God is like a two-edged sword. He says it is powerful. Living. What I want is that it is living. It's powerful. It is sharper. Piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit. These two are invisible. Ememe. The soul no moyo. and the spirit are among the invisible things. But the word of God is so powerful that it can separate these two. I love the last part. It is a discerner. The discerner is a discerner of thoughts. The word of God. The word of God. Is one of the tools that the Holy Spirit uses. If He is to give us strength in our inner man. Bible yegama mu yere mie sura ya bilimu sato nyudwa rabi limu muenda. Jeremiah twenty three twenty nine. Abuza is not your word like fire. Agama tete gama chete chiringa muriro. Is not your word like a hammer. Tete gama changa tete chiringa nyondo. That breaks the rock in 
pieces. He asked a question. Isn't the word of God like fire? I want you to imagine when you fed on the word of God. And you knew there is fire burning up in your inner man. And you knew you have hammers of the spirit. That can break a rock into pieces out of your sight. The word of God. The writer of Psalms 119. The entire script, the entire chapter talks about the word of God. And verse 105 says. That your word is a lamp, a lamp unto my feet. Your word is a light unto my path. The word of God is a lamp. If you are to go through this year, there are many things you don't know that I need. But there is the word of God that works as a lamp. Lightening wherever you put your feet. And not only where I stand, but also the whole path. I have said my word is a lamp unto your feet. The word of God is light unto my path. Raise your hand, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Give me the grace to read the Give me the grace to understand the Give me the grace to do the Give me grace to read the Give me grace to understand the Give me grace to do your word. Amen. Amen. The same Psalm 119 Verse 103 It says That the word of God Is sweet Sweeter than honey I want you, I want you to understand the that here The sweetest thing at the moment Which they knew Was honey you remember Samson's parable? He asked the Philistines, what is sweeter than honey? So the writer says that the word of God is sweeter than honey to my mouth. Psalm 119. Verse 98. He says your words. Makes me wiser than my enemies. Turn to your neighbor and ask him and you fail to read the word. What challenges you in life? Tap your neighbor and tell you what you Only that makes me read the Bible. Through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. For they are ever with me. Can you speak that word about yourself? Are you sure the word of God is ever with you? Are you sure the word of God is ever with you? Are you sure the word of God is ever with you? Are you sure the word of God is ever with you? Can you decide that among your year resolutions that you will decide that the word of God will be ever with you? In John 17 and verse 17 here we have the prayer of our Lord. The, uh, the prayer in Matthew 6 
Verse nine. That is not our Lord's prayer. That was a template of how we should pray. John 17, that is our Lord's prayer. That is where our Lord prays. But this is one thing he spoke out. That sanctify them by your truth. For your word is truth. Tukogere nyofe na aha, muluganda, batukuze na mazima. Aha, kubange chigambo cho, ge mazima. Tuche gambe, tukole otia, tutukuze na mazima. Kubanga, e chigambo cho, ge mazima. Njau chukwate mubanga ngo chongera. Ntukuza na mazima. Baibo yu jobo kwata. Ntukuza na mazima. Na mazima Aha, Kubange spirit. chigambo cho Mazima, mazima. Mujitabe chuche njini musule yomunana In the same book in verse 8 Ulunyuluasa tumubiri Chapter 8 verse 32 Agamba ili haba yudaya bali wa mukiriza He speaks unto the Jews that had believed on him that if you shall continue in my teaching, you will be my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth And the truth shall make you free In chapter 18 The same book John Verse 37 continuing verse, Pilate stands before Jesus And Jesus says these words That I came to testify of truth Remember he has said my word is true That when you shall know the truth you shall be set free And the man Pilate asked a question At the right moment And to the right person he asked After Jesus said my word is the truth then Pilate asked Jesus What is truth? A fool even when he asks a question He remains a fool and it hurts Pilate asked a question of the wise But he didn't wait for an answer So Jesus is not a fool To speak unto air after Pilate asked that question He went out of the presence of Jesus And Jesus didn't answer us what truth is The man had asked a question The man had said if you shall know the truth That truth shall make you free My word is truth and Pilate asked a question What is truth? And then he departed And when he had said this He went out again to the Jews And said to them I find no fault in So the question why did he ask? I wish it was Peter who asked this question because we know that because when you read 2 Timothy 3 7, the Bible says that there are those who always learn, but they never come unto the understanding of the truth. Every day. The born always. Radio Zaja. The radios came. TV Zaja. The TVs are on. Online Zaja. Online Zaja. We feed. But yet there are few born again whom you can stay in a conversation with and you keep the right content in the conversation. When you're building one another and they don't put trash within. 
That is a trouble. Again, be always learning. Never able to come to the knowledge. Of the truth. Sanctify them with the truth. My word is truth. Gamba I yesu. Say Lord Jesus. Chogiri ngachi ya ena mugambe mukama. Say Lord. Ncheta ga. I need it. In the Bible, there is a woman I'll conclude with. They write about her thrice. The Bible writes about her thrice. Mary. She's called Mary. Mary of Bethany. Mary of Bethany. Mary Whenever we see Mary, she's at the feet of Jesus. The Bible shows us Mary But every time you see her, she's seated at the feet of Jesus. In different circumstances. First we see her in John, in John 10, 39, sitting at the feet of Jesus. What was happening? Food. For her, she sat at the feet of Jesus to listen to the word of Jesus. When food is present and the word of God goes what do you choose? I think it is verse 39. Luke 10. We see Mary for the first time. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. Amid is the aroma of food. Again we see her. In John 11. And verse 39, there was death. 11, Jesus said, take away the stone. Yes. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, is Daiwaguru. John 11. I want you to see Mary in this chapter. But you will see her sitting at the feet of Jesus. Then, when Mary came, when uh, Jesus and saw him, she fell down at his feet. At the feet of Jesus. At the time of food, she was at the feet of Jesus, listening to the word of God. Put it in the first column in the word of God. As feasting and food is being served, she, she knew that man does not live by bread alone. I have not said you don't live food. I've said you don't live by only food. She knew she will need the food. But Jesus, not at all times. At the time of eating, she sat at the feet of Jesus. In John 11, there was death. There was a situation. So put that under the column of circumstances or situation. Hard situations. Where was Mary? At the feet of Jesus. John 12 and verse 3. We see her in another state. A time of fragrance. Where was she? At the feet of Jesus. Ask your neighbor on whose feet are you? Ask your neighbor on whose feet are you? Oh, on whose feet are you usually on? Mary. Mary. Her strength. Feet of Jesus. I want this year for you to take a decision. And so I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to pray. Situations are not called. They come by themselves. And everyone receives a situation at their level. If you're still young. 
in the spirit. You will get your fellow babes in the spirit to test you when you grow. Every level that comes unto you, those who test you, show you. If you don't know your weight in the spirit, examine the situations that have come unto you. If your problem has been food, tell your neighbor that is the level you are at food. If the Lord wants to promote a person, he brings a situation. Your enemies describe how weighty you are. This year, decide to read the Bible. He has said your word is sweeter than honey. And then you fail to read it. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, and what you fail to read the word. What inspires you? You go back to your age and then you, me, I read the Bible in January and I finished it in one month. I used to read without the specs, but now I need the specs to read. So what I do, I start in December and then finish in the next year. This one is the one I'm going to read next year. Today in the morning I stopped in Esther. I want to finish it by the end of the third week of January next year. And in March I will repeat. And in the sixth month I will repeat. And even in December next year I will repeat it. Because that is our oil. He says your word I've hidden in my heart. Psalm 119 and verse 11. That that word, your word I've hidden in my heart. That I may not sin against you. Have you never read that? Only the sin that disturbs us, he says that the strength not to sin, he keeps the word of God. He has not said your word I've kept, that I've hidden it. He says it is a role to hide the word. The way you hide your money from your husband. You say, I'm not going to go to the house. 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 The way, the way you can hide any other thing. Now hide the word of God in your heart. Your word I have hidden in my heart. Why? That I may not sin against you. Bible, you can read the Bible. In one, in one month, some of you are still young and your eyes are not Magala dim. Your outward man is still young. Your outward man is still young, so don't pretend to act like an old man. Chapters a nabulunaku. Forty chapters a day. Ana. Forty. Osulukumalako Bible. You can finish the Bible. Mumwezi gumu. In one month. Zina chitani sasa mukao gugwe chido na bademu koroni kuzi twenty five amazia ne mala esta kusa kumi na bidi. I started at midnight and I finished from Chronicles to Esther. Kumi na bidi zoku macha. At 6 a.m. For Bible is my. For Bible is my. For you. 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 For he says, I don't sin because I've hidden your word in my heart. In your plans next year. Let the first on the list be I'm going to read the Bible. Even if you don't list the situations, they will come. They will come. Let me tell you what will come. Your child may die. 
They can rob your house. You can die. The one you love most can die. But if you go to the Bible, you can die. But if you faint on an evil day, day that if you faint on an evil day, Proverbs 24:10, your strength is small. So the day of sorrow will come. Jesus says in Luke 17. That the things which stumble will not fail to come. In fact, he says, "He says, impossible, difficult." Seventeen one, look. He gamba ebiyesi taza tebidi de makujia. That the stumbling blocks will not fail to come. Impossible, he says, "Be difficult." Nti chizi we ebiyesi taza butajia. That Jesus wa gamba it is impossible. Gendo umole bigenda kujia. So if Jesus says it is impossible, so just rest, they will come. They are parking and they are waiting. They are just putting them. 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 But if they find the word of God hidden in you, prayer can be made. Prayer can be made. And you understand what you pray about. Praise our Lord. Praise the Lord. Forty chapters a day. You will have completed in one night. Twenty chapters a day. You read for two months. You go on dividing. Bible in our chapters. Chikumi one thousand one eleven eighty nine. Ebera cheyo eleven eighty nine. The chapters divided by 365. Imagine how we hypocrite. 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 Imagine how you tell Jesus only you, but he says, how come? Such, just imagine um, such, what, 24 hours. Imagine he gives us 24 hours. And we cannot give him four hours. Four hours. No, four hours. You just decide and you say, you get three hours for the word. One for prayer. Next year. Let that be your strategy. You will be different. New. Different. New. Very different. Tell your neighbor it is possible. It is possible. It is possible. Tap to people in front of you and tell them it is possible. I am going to read the Bible. Tell your neighbor I am going to read the Bible. I can't fail to give my Jesus two hours. You give your mattress nine hours. Nine hours. Nine hours. Others 12 hours. And 3 hours. And even if you want to turn it TV, 3 hours. 3 hours for the TV. And you think you'll be strong in the inner man. Even a little demon will start with you. Stand up on your feet and we pray. God bless you. Gamba ay yesu nguwani se mikono jo. Mugambe ay yesu. Mpe chise chisome chigambo. Give me grace to read your words. Mpe chise chisaba. Give me grace to pray. Omoyo wo. Atu ya mbenga. Tu angule, angule, tu angule. Hallelujah. Omo yo, atu ya benga, atu ya benga. Tu angule, tu angule, tu angule. Hallelujah. Tu angule, tu angule. Tu angule, tu angule, tu angule.